with an unidentified energy prevalent in a quiet suburban home, Spyro attempts to uncover the source of many unknown disturbances. Reported activity seemed to centre around the children of the house, and this included various noises coming from upstairs, objects moving, banging on walls, and the daughter seeing a shadow at the foot of her bed, with the bed covers being pulled off whilst she slept. Even the young son has taken to praying in his room, to keep away the nasty people, as he has said. This is from a child who does not have a religious family, and no one knows where he gets praying from as he does not go to preschool or seen this on TV. Joining us on this investigation are Mark's colleagues from Paranormal Radio Show, Tuning In, including special guest medium, Paul Sisso. It was the things that Tanya was saying, the um, activity that's been going on, they've had noises, they've had um, shadows, uh, bedclothes being pulled, things like that, uh, which worries uh, the eldest child. Um, so I thought it would be a good idea to get Spiral in, ask Debbie if she'd like us to come in and to investigate and see what we could find and if we can help her at all. Well, it's nice to come out to a private residency obviously, it's not something that we do frequently, we usually go to different areas and um, work in places such as uh, churches or woodlands or anything like that at all, so to come out to a private home is quite good. But of course we do paranormal show tuning in which goes out once a month on the first Friday of every month, just plug it there. But uh, yeah, what we do is on the show we, we carry out investigations, we obviously have special guests in, so we, we just like to get people in and find out what their experiences are within the paranormal. It's not just to do with ghosts or anything like that, anything to do with UFOs, strange objects, things that can't be explained really. Um, we're here in uh, Chesterton in Surrey, uh, along with our spiral members and also with my colleagues that are tuning in. And we're here to hopefully help uh, Debbie out with some uh, alleged activity happening in our house. Um, Paul Sisso, um, guest medium today, has picked up some stuff already and pretty damn spot on actually which is really lovely when you can actually validate stuff so um, yeah it's just a small investigation today and um, say we're not going in looking for ghosts we're here to help somebody so it's, it's, it's a completely different sort of dynamic but see it all started since we've done all the changes mm -hmm. this is an old Roman site yeah. all out the back of course this was like orchards here but there's banging you hear it sitting here my friend that's been staying is hearing it and it happens at different times. I mean, uh, we went to bed at half past four the other night and she said to me, that banging started again. And yet it was 12 o'clock one night when she was here. And I was listening because I said, maybe it's the neighbors. I don't see things anyway. I sent, I get a tingling and sent things like that, but I don't see things. Just walked through, through the hall when we first arrived, walked through to the kitchen as I walked through. Um, Head was very spinny, I just felt very giddy. Um, not as sick as what I felt as another one recently, but a little bit sick. And I sort of went into the kitchen and took a step back. Um, I don't made me do it, I, sort of walked, I felt like I walked into something and walked back. Obviously, like you've got a number of things that are going on here. Um, you've got a very active family, um, it's a very busy household. You've got three children running around mm -hmm. and just three children alone. Um, their own energies, you know, are going to be very active. The, the psychic energy that they're creating around them mm -hmm. is going to be active. We've got this wood mm -hmm. and that was very, very noticeable. I mean, I walked through the house and thought, oh, nothing here. I have to admit, I walked straight through the house, nothing here, until I walked out into the garden and it's like, oh, here it all is. You know, obviously, at some point, this whole area has been cut into this very ancient wood. Mm -hmm. um, you've got very ancient wood here, so you've got probably, I'm not saying there is, but probably you've got elementals attached to mm. this area, yeah. okay? Now, whether there has been some kind of medieval settlement here or something, there's been some kind of settlement here, I know that much. What kind of settlement, whether it's medieval, I don't know. I know that we're going back 
you know, mm -hmm. not just a hundred years. Thank you, Doug. And obviously, we've got a very active dog as well <laughs> um, that's creating his own energy. But you've got, we're going back hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, maybe 500 years. So this whole area seems to have had a lot of activity. You know, obviously, little hamlets, I would get the impression, would have been here. Whether there was some kind of battle here, I don't mm. know. But certainly, where we're here, this so this area there seems to have been a lot of disturbance. Um, so there seems to be a lot of residue energy sort of attached mm -hmm. to this whole area. Um, but it's coming from woods. So you've got a you've got a number of elements going on. One, we've got very active children mm -hmm. that are creating their own psychic energy. You've got parents also that are also very sensitive. Mm -hmm as well, who are also creating their own psychic energy. With no prior knowledge of the area or its history, Paul had identified the ancient settlement which originally stood here, and we wonder what else will be revealed as he began his walk round of the house. You know, just being up here you can feel the energy very different to what is actually down um, stairs. Um, even down in the front rooms um, there is a very different energy to, to what's up here. You can, you can feel more of a more of an active energy but as i would like to stress there is nothing that i'm getting indications that would have caused me um to feel that there is anything negative here in this house i mean the the vibrations of this house are very calm and very peaceful in fact as a medium i'm finding it very easy to work in here um because of the energy has that dark figure ever made any contact with her or made any noises or actually just shown itself to her? No noises, she's seen it and uh, she can't move. She says she feels she can't move and she can't call out. Um, but it did try and pull the covers off her. Is, is that on quite a, a regular occurrence or has it just been a one-off incident? Or? No, about four or five times now it's, she's, uh, it's happened. Putting my medium's hat to one side for the moment and looking at it from a psychological perspective. Um, obviously when we sleep um, the brain shuts down certain um, functions in our body and because obviously as we know we, we you know we all dream and obviously there are times when we do reenact our dreams so to prevent us from hurting ourselves um, we go into the sleep paralysis um, which stops the body from um, moving um, and it starts to shut down certain functions and so sometimes when we can then be aroused suddenly from that, that sleep and especially if we are in that um, paralyzed state um, and suddenly we can wake up and we can't move and we're paralyzed because the signal hasn't yet been sent down from the brain to allow the body to start to wake up and to start moving so again we can feel this sort of sensation of having difficulty breathing um, we're not able to move the arms, we're not able to move, move the legs, you know, we want to sort of call out, but we can't. Um, so it's just the signals aren't quite reaching the areas they should. That's just because we're still in this, this sleep paralysis, even though we've, we've woken up. Okay, Paul, now we've come up to a, a tiny attic space. It's very warm up here, <laughs> quite small in terms of the, the, the roofing size for, for our heads. Um, are you feeling anything up here at all? It's hard to explain what I'm feeling up here. Um, again, obviously we're up in the roof. It is, it is hot up here. Yeah. Um, there's, there's not the same energy that was feeling down in the daughter's room, mm. but surprisingly, when we've come up here, um, I'm not getting any impressions about the house while we're moving around the house, but the second we came up here, I felt as if there was another house that had been here previously. So I don't know if that's something we might be able to find out about, but it's almost like there was another house here before this house. Right, okay. So there's something, you know, it's almost as if, mm, I'm saying this shouldn't be here. Maybe I want to go back 200 years, something like this. This is the impression that I'm getting, and I want to go to perhaps, you know, on in this area, perhaps there was a small hamlet. I think I may have said this um, mm. earlier on. Um, you know, I said I know that there's always been settlements around the, these areas, but yeah. perhaps just where we are, whether there was a small hamlet or something like that, it feels as if there was a very different house that was here. But I've also felt the presence, mediumistically, I've felt the presence of a gentleman following me around. Right. Now I haven't really been talking to him, but his presence has, has become stronger when we've become up when we've come up here. Yeah. So, but he feels to me as if he was perhaps 
somebody that was associated with this house at some point, whether he was the owner and whether he had died. Um, I don't believe he's died in the house, but I'm wondering whether he was a previous owner, whether he had connections to do with the army or was in the war, I don't know. Certainly I can feel a gentleman that was in a uniform anyway. And certainly, I mean, obviously, you know, when we have possessions, no, no matter what kind, whether they are, you know, a house or whether it's a watch or something that we own, we leave our energy, we leave our, our, our blueprint um, behind. We've now come back into the first original bedroom that we were speaking in. Um, and as you said, the, the energy seems to have got lighter, doesn't it? It doesn't seem yeah. so suppressive in yeah, here anymore. Yeah, we walked into, it was very oppressive, it was very heavy. Yeah. Um, and you could feel the energy in here. Now it's very much the same as the front house. Yeah. Um, and I think that what's happened is, you know, we're all, you know, especially, you know, me as being a medium, you know, I'm a very positive person, we're all very positive people. And I feel just our own energies have been enough to kind of change the energy in here and uplift it and kind of any sort of stagnant energy that we've got that, that was sort of in here. So any residual energy that was here yeah. cr being created by any previous thought process yeah. has now been lifted. It's now just been moved. Certainly, I'm very poor. you've got um, you know combinations. I've said to you earlier that there is you know the land site itself is the land is very active. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of um, energy to do with the land because of its past and what's been taking place here with the settlements that have been here. You've got natural elements of you know as I said to you earlier. You've got a swimming pool out there. You've got. Um, you know, goldfish pond, very large one. You've got water in the house, water in the garden. They've got gas here. They've got electricity. So again, all of these elements, you know, carry energy as well. And so you've got the mother who is very sensitive. You've got two daughters that are hypersensitive. You've got what the eldest daughter with her daughter, who's also very, very sensitive. Mm. And then you've got a two-year-old boy who is again very sensitive and very in tune with his surroundings and the energy around him. So that combination from the family who are all open to um, psychic phenomena, paranormal phenomena as well, they seem a lot more relaxed than yeah. when we first arrived. Now we've explained the situation, you can feel them being, you know, they, they're a lot calmer, um, they're a lot more content and even the eldest daughter who is I was quite scared by all this and saying, well, now I understand what's happening. It, there's a form of acceptance with her, so I feel that whatever they've been experiencing, they'll probably experience it less and less now, um, simply because they're not focusing on it and, and giving it life.